welcome to our football segment that is going to be every single Monday now for the rest of football season. We're doubling down on the episodes. You guys have been listening, so we might as well throw it around. We're not really quite sure how we're going to upload things lately, but welcome to the Monday show. I am Kendra Middleton, joined by Haley Jamalo and Tyler, our producer. Um, I kind of want to just quickly recap our fantasy stuff because people have been keeping up with the fantasy stuff. I feel like the squad's also listening to the show for the fantasy stuff. Um, I am completely giving up on my team already. It's week one and I am going yeah. to lose this league. How do I we agree. feel about OBJ? Um, I haven't got, so I, if you don't follow us on socials, I was at Gillette for Tom Brady's retirement game yesterday against the Eagles. So I am just now watching back all of the games from yesterday. I've watched the Jags Colts game. I finished the Chargers Dolphins game. I finished the Packers Bears game. And now we're about to watch Monday night football. So I haven't gotten to that game yet, but I will eventually have thoughts. Okay. Um, but it doesn't do well. Spoiler alert. Yeah. The fact that <laughs> Dallas Goddard didn't have a single catch yesterday and Kadarius Tony that we already talked about has butterfingers really. And Lamar Jackson got me seven points. Mm-hmm. Not in this league, but in my other league, I had Dallas Goddard and who was my other zero point player? I had another zero T. Higgins. Player. T Higgins. Thank you. Zero points for both of them. So sick. Tyler Thank had you. a huge week and yeah, so has two guys to go. Yeah. Dalton uh, can out, start for you. Miami huh? Dolphins. Yeah. Uh, Andrews was, is hurt. Sadly. So we're we're jumping right into the deep end with Dalton Kincaid. Um, but I don't Nancy mean. almost so. could have beat Steve. If Stefan Diggs doesn't get more than three points, Nancy will win, but that is probably not gonna happen. It's tough. I did lose most likely against Ryan. However, I am a firm believer that karma is a biatch and that he will get his comeuppance by the end of the season. Um, but honestly the quarterback for Cleveland who should not be named had a 20 point game. So I'm a little bit Jason having a big week too. Holy crap. Team weenie got the dub team ween. Honestly, a lot of the teams that I didn't expect to win this week are going to win. So pretty boys doing well. Yeah. He's and he has Jonathan Taylor outscored me. Oh, because Dallas defense. Yeah, Tyler did call me the other day, uh, yesterday, maybe this morning, and very subtly, but not subtly at all, bragged that he had the most points. No, it was before. Time. It was before yesterday. Yesterday night's game. Um, that was great. But one last shout out, I'll give to myself. Uh, it is poetic that I popped off playing against Kirk Cousins. So. Yeah. Ooh, good, yeah. good Fair. point, Tyler. Good point. So I don't like expect that. it again next week, but there's that positivity. Okay. All right. Any other fantasy thoughts? Nope. Um, stay tuned for our lineups at the end of this week because I can tell you right now they're gonna look different. Uh, yeah, things week. are definitely gonna look different. I honestly kind of as much as Kadarius Tony fucked me over in fantasy and betting. I'm glad that I rode with my bet and started him over Odell because I feel like a man. Oh, and you did do that. O- I thought you started yeah. Odell. No, I did not. And honestly, I don't really regret it that much. Like the difference wasn't. An, I mean, I don't know. Should I regret this? I don't. Yeah, think like so. they're both very yeah. regrettable players. Yeah, I really anyway. fucked up. To be honest, <laughs> like my team. Did your other is guy do crazy. anything? Um, your the slants, uh, Michael Thomas. Mm, he had eleven points this week. Oh, not bad. Yeah, good for Michael. Not Thomas. bad for a one trick pony. Chase Claypool, what a guy! Did you guys see the video I tweeted of him a little earlier? Because it's kind of hilarious. <laughs> I did. I did. See it's that. it's pretty funny. What? I don't. I don't even know if I know what team Chase Claypool is on these days. He's not on Pittsburgh Bears. anymore. He's on the Bears. Oof. The Bears. Rough. Yeah, yeah, Tyler. I'll send this tweet in our group chat. But it was it was comedic genius. Um. 
All right. So we're going to start with our NFL stuff just because we talked about fantasy. We're going to recap a little bit of week one, get into what we're looking for for week two, talk about our bets, and then we're going to do the same with college football. And that's pretty much going to be our Monday shows. Pretty casual. I'm obviously in my bed in a new spot. You know, we're all just hanging out. We'll keep the Friday shows as they are, but we're watching football, hanging out in bed. That's just how it's going to be. Probably more of like a Saturdays and spliffs to style episode if you've been around here for a hot minute. Um, so the first game I watched back was the Jags Colts game. Tyler, I know you were watching red zone Haley. I don't, did you catch this game? I did. I did. I caught right. some of it, not the whole thing. I was bouncing in and out between this one and the Cleveland Cincinnati game, which was why I was able to provide insight there earlier. But, um, yeah, I did. I was happy with it. I thought they looked pretty good. Your thoughts. I, I thought, I don't think they looked that great on, offense outside of Calvin Ridley and some I mean actually that's a lie I think they looked okay the game was just really fluky and for Mm. that reason it left a bitter taste in my mouth like that tank fumble I didn't like I big dress rehearsal vibes you know like it's called a rookie mistake for a reason like I have it in our notes that he made some rookie mistakes but all in all I think that they really relied on him heavily in the beginning and they kind of went to ETN later in the game and I hope that that's not how that cycle continues in the future. Like, I don't want them to split time in that way. I want them to split carries throughout every single quarter. Um, But that was just, you know, like a random thing that probably won't stick around for long. I thought the big shocker for me here was that Anthony Richardson looked a lot better than I expected him to. I thought so as well. I don't know. The offense is going through him. I, I, he did go down um, for, for a second, which was very worrisome, but I would almost, went off on Twitter about how right I was, but he he's going to be fine. I think he's, I mean, I don't think he's going to be, I, I don't know. His floor and his ceiling are insane for me. And no. I just can't, I can't decide which one I'm on. I was huge on him in the draft. I just don't like him starting immediately for the Colts. I've said in it before. I'll say it again. Yeah. It's a bad yeah, situation. Exactly. Like I think he needs to sit somewhere for a couple of years. Like we like Lamar Jackson is such a random case that one of these mobile quarterbacks has worked out as well as they have. I don't like, even I'd think that. See... I just think he needs help. He has no he... help on that team. True. That's true. Yeah, that's, that's true too. I mean, he would have been able to rely on the run game a little bit more if, if you know, the organization was yeah. wasn't so stupid. Yeah. Um, I just feel like Jacksonville maybe got ca- like caught sleeping a little, maybe looking forward to Kansas city a bit. Didn't really. Ca- and it's the first game of the season, you know, like everyone's getting the jitters out, whatever. I'm just hoping that this isn't this bad luck or whatever you want to call it. I don't know. The defense looked better than I thought they would. Calvin Ridley is Jesus. Um, oh, that TD was so sweet. It was so, so exciting. Like that was just awesome. Was Zay awesome. Jones you know, continues to step up in big moments. I liked a little bit of his tape this week. Um, That block that ETN had for Ridley was awesome. I know Brandon Sheriff has a sprained ankle, might miss this game. That's a huge L, especially because of the Cam Robinson suspension. I did chalk this up on our schedule as an L already. So it's kind of, as long as we don't get embarrassed, I'm not too freaked out about it. But my biggest W's for the Jags. I think that the Anthony Richardson situation was the biggest W overall, but the fact that Josh Allen and Trayvon Walker both showed up on the stat sheet W. We love it. And there was a Gardner Minshew sighting. <laughs> Shout out Gardner Minshew. Shout of the show. out. <laughs> we have lots of friends of the show this week. We have many friends. Many we, friends I don't know if you show. all knew, we have a lot of friends. Yeah, we're kind of... Kind of a big deal. Yeah, I've especially made Tyler. Books. Yeah. Um. Okay, Haley. I know you watched the Eagles Patriots game. I was there. The twenty percent chance of weather at two p.m. My ass. I stood in the rain for seven hours. That's crazy. Yep. Uh, I, I did know. that I one time never. at a Heck. parade for the Super Bowl in February. It was very cold. At least that's worth it. Hell yeah, brother. Absolutely was. I also got to say, I'm going to talk shit about Gillette for a minute. It is, first of all, the quietest home stadium I've ever been to. And I've gone to a lot of games there. I'll say it like quiet. And that's an interesting take. I don't necessarily it, agree with that. It is but a maybe quiet it was ass stadium. 
it's crazy. Like I genuinely was standing there and shocked how quiet it was, especially up in like the cheap seats up in the Raptors. And obviously there's not yeah. like, a super. I don't think that's the best place to judge though. Like up, we used to call that like, that's you're so high up up there. That's where people should be drunk and the most rowdy and everyone's no sitting way. in there. I hate for getting weeks. drunk up there. It's so scary. No. I always think I never fall. sit up there. I'd rather watch the game at home. <laughs> Tell was in Washington. We used that. to go to games in Washington, sit in the nosebleeds, and it felt like I was going to fall down the yeah. stadium. I like sitting in the nosebleeds because you can watch the play break down so much better. No, if I'm sitting in the nosebleeds, I just want to be watching on TV. That's how I feel. Yeah. Uh, 100%. Better view. Yeah. I kind of like it. There was no cheap seat in the house last night just because it was Tom Brady night. Sure. But the fact that there was like half of like sections missing because of the rain on Tom Brady night was t- tragic. Fitting though, because the weather sucked. So I don't know. Yeah, why like it's the first news. game of the season. Uh, yeah. like Tom, Tom Brady's in town. It's the Eagles. Like there's no excuse for that. I, that place should be. No, if the weather sucks, it's freezing. People hey, didn't show up. It was up. eighty degrees. Well, it's just like gross and wind. Like I don't know. I don't. I don't blame people for not showing up. I think that's like a bad fan take. No, I don't. I don't. I, I don't, don't think. I don't think I can see a whole lot of other places doing that. I think that's a crazy take. I think if you look at most NFL stadiums in that shitty weather, you will see empty sections. I don't think it's the best player of all time. Washington for sure. It's it's just a minimum. (laughs) If a guy who won us that many Super Bowls and whatever was coming back for this night to be recognized and it was week one against someone. But they sold tickets. Tickets, they sold out pretty much. That's not what I'm saying, though. I'm saying it's bad fandom to not show up or to not sell your seats. I mean, if you buy your seat and you don't show up, like that's on you. But once again, I think that's a bad fan move. Yeah, I guess those people that didn't show up, bad fans. And it's a quiet stadium. That's all I'm going to say. But I also have to continue complaining for one second because Robert Kraft bragged earlier this week that this ceremony was going to be like something we'd never seen before. (laughs) And And I was expecting them to retire his number on the spot, reveal a statue, Um, you know, I uh, like name the lighthouse after him, whatever. And all they did was just say he's skipping the four year wait period to go into the Patriots Hall of Fame, which we knew was going to happen anyway. Yeah, that was I wasn't surprised by that at all. I knew that just based on when we were there at Gillette, like the construction was very much not done. Like I knew it wasn't going to be anything physical. So I assumed they were probably going to do something like that. And it is kind of like, annoying that it's like something you've never seen before but like it technically is something we've never seen before but it's not super exciting so i get your disappointment there uh outside of that i thought the offense as a whole looked better than i expected it to at least as far as the receivers there was a lot of dropped passes don't get me wrong but the offensive line looked a lot better than i expected it to mac jones still not sold um I tried to start a Bailey Zappi chant when it went down 16 <laughs> nothing. Was he on the field? No. I didn't think so. Because, like, it was at the time, was Matt Corral still the backup? No, Bailey Zappi was the backup. He was. I can't week. remember like, when that signing happened. When that it happened they, on, like, moved that. So, yeah, they switched it around by the deadline this week. So, Corral was on the practice squad and Zappi was on the 53. Um, but I did try to start a Bailey Zappi chant in the rafters and nobody wanted any fun of it. (laughs) But it was after that pick six, so I felt like I had to try. Yeah. Uh I also don't think the Eagles looked as good as I thought that they are, like Jalen Hurts specifically. Devonta Smith did shred them a bit, but the fact that Dallas Goddard didn't have a single catch is kind of shocking to me. Yeah. Um definitely wild for sure considering that I had him on my fantasy team and was pretty much betting on him having at least a point to not um, see him at all was kind of shocking. I will say that defense though, the uh, Carter was in then Jalen Max Carter the ate this night. week. He was yeah. in Max face the whole I called night. It. Yeah. He looked dude. so good. I know. And like, that's the thing is like, he wasn't even projected to start, but he looked so good. Even as a rotational he... guy, he, he just is insane. Didn't he? Wasn't he one of the top tacklers this week? I don't know the stats exactly, but I I, I just he, saw so many clips and like every clip 
he was just in max face i think he was a top tackler this week um but i just i don't i don't think either team really went out there and won or like won this game it was like they were both trying to lose to be quite frank outside of the first quarter but it was just bad decision making that killed the Patriots. Like they should have kicked that field goal. And then at the end, like, it's not like they, they knew they were going to get the ball back when there was nine minutes left. So going for it on that fourth down, I don't know what that was about. They should have kicked the field goal. They even had an extra opportunity because you can't expect for that fumble recovery to go that way either. So I don't know. I, I just thought that it was bad decision making that really lost them this game and your next three games don't get any easier. So yeah, I was really happy with the defense. I thought they looked much better than they Judon have had a good game in like recent memory. I think that our defense is in a really good spot. Judon looked really sick. Um, again, I would agree. I think it, I was laughing because so much of Bill Belichick is right, like situational football, situational football, and I know that's what he went in there at halftime, just like hammering home, and it was that was where the mistakes were being made. So. I don't know how much they can improve on that because it's something that they've already been trying to improve on. It's just simple stuff that simple penalties, simple situational football where they drop it. And it's really frustrating, honestly. So I was happy they were able to keep it close um, at that 16 and 0 mark. I was like, this is really embarrassing. And I was just not looking forward to the rest of the game, but then they made it close. Um, so I was honestly pretty happy with it. I'm still not happy with Mac. Um, there were a couple clear examples again of him just with poor pocket management. I just feel like he gets into these situations where he just can't make quick decisions in the pocket when the pressure's on and with an O-line like ours, like it's going to be on the entire season. So whether it's the Eagles defense or the Chiefs defense or any other honest, like honestly, any other defense in the league, like they need to be ready for that. And I don't have full confidence in him for that quick time decision-making, but maybe he will change my mind. Um, the play calling seemed much more seamless than last year. Again, that's only game one, so we can't really make that determination going forward. But I was honestly happy with it. Obviously, it was an L, but I was expecting this one to be an L to begin with, to be quite frank. Are you – so you're chalking up the moral victory. I'm chalking up a self-moral victory. Um, I, I don't know. I think it'll be interesting too, to hear like what the guys say at the station too this week. Um, I'm sure they're not going to give them, you know, too big of a break. Uh, I think that we saw a lot of kinks that need to be worked out. So, um, and like you said, the schedule doesn't get any easier. So making sure it doesn't get any more embarrassing is going to be the key, but I'm going to give it a moral victory for now. Okay. Tyler, any thoughts? No, I don't really have too much thoughts. I didn't get to catch that full game. So. All Shout out right. Jimmy Carter was all I had. True. Um, okay. Wait, Tyler, your notes are killing me. Why? Because they're green? Yeah. And I just Mr. Formatting. My... Mr. Formatting here. I like italics. I think italics looks cool. <laughs> okay. Um, did anybody else want yeah, you you have thoughts on the Chargers Dolphins game, Tyler? Uh that was more just like um well it, it was a big time college football vibes in that game. They just kept scoring. It was, it was just like watching Colorado and TCU last week. Yeah. Just they just kept scoring. And my uh, I just pat myself on the back again for two and Tyreek. It's the biggest fantasy weekend I think I've ever had. I have to say the Austin Eckler injury, I think the only person to blame is Brandon Staley. Like they overused the hell out of him yesterday to to a point where like I don't, I, I understand an injury like, and he's already injury prone to begin with, but they fucking ran the ball so much and so hard yesterday. And it, yeah, it worked out for them, but holy shit, <laughs> dude. Yeah, yeah. I have to agree. I think that's a perfect example of what we've talked about already on the show about our concerns with him and his leadership abilities. That's one where it's like, it seems so obvious, like get him off, like stop giving it to him. You're going to give him an injury. And sure enough. I'm- I'm also just convinced that Justin Herbert, like, I love him as a player. I love him as a person. I genuinely love him as a person more than I love him as a player. But I don't think, I think he has negative clutch gene. (laughs) I think that's 100% accurate. Negative. It's not not that out of bounds. 
he doesn't have big like um, I'm not gonna say he doesn't have balls but like <laughs> there is a certain ballsiness lacking yeah. yeah, like, I just want him to go out there and, like, whip it out on somebody at some point. And it's like, no, you go ahead. You score. It's it's fine. Or just, you know, like, let me. <laughs> yeah, I'll hand yeah, I'll it just, off. I'll hand just, you know, yeah, like, you know, let's just run it again. Like, I don't really, I don't really feel like it. I'm not like confident. It. I, don't, I don't really feel like it. <laughs> Is he me if I were an NFL quarterback? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so. You guys have similar. I think he's me he's as an not, NFL quarterback. He doesn't like social media. He's quiet. He's shy. Like, kind of awkward. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You know, I, you know, yeah, like I just, you guys are very similar, but obviously I think the biggest W on, I'm going to change my winner. We, we picked winners and losers for the week. I'm changing my winner to Tua because honestly okay. he looked good. He didn't take any nasty hits. It doesn't look like he's regressed. He had a big day. Him and Tyreek had, you know, a lot of chemistry yesterday. Once again, how do you not? But the thing is, it's like, that was what yeah. I was just gonna say. Like he might be my winner on the weekend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they looked good. Yeah. Their offense looked like in like prime shape. They like yeah. midseason form almost. Their yeah, defense totally. obviously needs some work, but their offense is like in midseason. But form. that was the that was the understanding going in though. Is yeah. that it was, yeah. we, and we didn't even know if their offense was going to be that good going in. So I I think yeah. they exceeded expectations for sure. Yeah, I think they are one of the teams that won the week for sure. I will say the Dolphins were my number three team in this division um, with our divisional previews. And if that Dolphins team played the Patriots team of yesterday. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm great. telling you. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now. Oh, right and right oh two against Miami. We that cannot play Miami. You all real. generally do struggle playing Miami. We too, cannot play on Miami. A normal year. But it's a home game for the Patriots, and the Patriots always lose at Miami. We, yeah. I'm, I am of the, I am of the mind that Miami period, point blank period, does something to the Patriots. They do. Like they just like yeah. they. So they I can always have. And if I, I totally yeah. agree. If that team comes out, I don't it's know. a so in the arms of the angels. Because it's like one of those situations where I don't think the New England offense is going to be able to keep up. No way. I, yeah. I will say I was also very impressed by the Chargers offensive line yesterday. They had a lot of good blocks. They let, they gave Herbert a ton of time at points, and they really helped the run game. Like, I honestly can't even imagine what Austin Eckler would be like if their line didn't play how they did yesterday. Yeah. Yep. But again, and that goes back to, like, how long like it, that's going to be hard to maintain all season long i think like if brandon staley is making those decisions that are putting these players at risk like making sure that you provide some leverage for that o-line so that they're not under that con like that's just that's going to be so hard to maintain i feel like for that team if they're not used properly <laughs> yeah they've definitely got to diversify their attack like have to um, my only other Dolphins thoughts were that I think Tua, like if you're in a huge league, like a big league, like a 14 man league, and you're kind of like scrounging for some wide receiver depth. I think that Tua was, I watched this game back earlier. Tua was looking for like Braxton had some targets and stuff. Don't get me wrong, but Tua was looking for him second after Tyreek. Yeah, fair. Is he their number two? Like their true number two? I don't no, know. But I, no, think he, but I think, I think he's going like... to be. Who's yeah. their true number two? Do you, do we know off the top of our Jalen Waddle. Waddle, oh, Waddle, 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 baby. <laughs> Waddle um, I saw a, you know, interesting graphic this week of Jalen, Tua, and Mac all together. And I was looking at it at the end of the weekend, and I said, I think Tua had the best weekend out of these three quarterbacks. And I don't think yeah. I would have said that at the beginning of the weekend. Too. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't have said that either. I would have taken Jalen. I think Jalen's yeah. got some rust, but yeah. me too. That yeah, Super Bowl hangover, I think man. I think they'll be fine. They'll be fine. Um, and then also, last thing I want to say about this game is that just after the game that Tyreek Hill had, he just proves to me that there is no God. There. Elaborate. Yeah. Is there just. Any how can you be such a terrible human being <laughs> off the field, <laughs> yet so sick at football? That's how I feel about the Cleveland quarterback. I'm very yeah. frustrated about his. But Tyreek, except, except the better. Cleveland quarterback. 
he might not be good anymore. <laughs> there's there's a theory out there that he's not good anymore. Yeah, but I um, scored 20 it. fantasy points for Ryan this weekend. Yeah, so as far as the numbers Matt are Ryan telling will do me, that Tyler. From time to time, too. Uh, well, uh, to Kendra's point, there's no good. <laughs> it's not looking great. <laughs> there's no, no. God. Not also, the, the game has officially situation. kicked off. All right. We are watching Bill's Jets here, people. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This is my game of the week. I believe, Kendra, it was your game of the week as well. I'm very it excited was, for this. Yeah. Um, Haley, we uh-huh. talked about it before we got on. Yes, ma'am. What do you think happened to the Bengals yesterday? Yeah, so uh, obviously Kendra was at uh, the stadium. I don't. I, I I know you're awesome and you go to a lot of games, Kendra, but I have to tell you, I missed you very much uh, yesterday <laughs> not being able to talk to you about what was going on because especially with Cincinnati and Cleveland, we talked last week about, you know, the Ohio Bowl. It was classic, you know, Ohio fandom. Like, it was pretty equal, honestly, between Cleveland and Cincinnati fans. Um, But the Bengals just got out there and kind of like really embarrassed themselves. Joe Burrow, I mean, coming off this huge signing, there was all this talk, all this momentum. And, you know, of course, we we all work in production, right? So some interns out there slaving away a Joe Burrow graphic about how much money he's making. And then they cut to the live footage and he throws a pick or like he gets sacked. It was just really cringe. Um, and I don't know. I think they just collapsed under the pressure. They weren't utilizing the wide receivers that we've talked about, um, probably being one of their biggest assets. Amari Cooper, um, we are, we literally went over this earlier and I already forget who we talked about, but oh, wait, you and you and T Higgins have beef. T Higgins. I have such beef with T Higgins right now. I can't, like, I literally am trying to get his name out of my mind, and that's why I keep forgetting it, because I'm so upset. Him and Dallas Goddard got me zero zip points each. I had Dallas Goddard in a league, too. Oh, so I'm very upset. But, yeah, um, and here's the thing. Shock twist. Cleveland did not look that bad. I But I'm yet to decide if it's that Cincinnati looked really bad and Cleveland was just okay or was Cleveland really good in Cincinnati? Just, I think it, I lean more towards Cincinnati shit the bed and Cleveland just happened upon a good day. That's I where think I'm at. I think it's a big rust situation, personally. I think Cincinnati's going to be fine. But how but, do you put up like that few points? Is that's my what was cringy. That's what was, they could not score. It was well, sometimes you just don't have it. You weren't prepared. Yeah, it I did also not think prepared they, they, at they all. did pull Joe at like did, what time in the fourth quarter? I don't even know. I, it was I early. It off at it was, they point. pulled him before the game was over. I also think that this division is one of the most wide open in the AFC. Mm-hmm. I didn't think so. And now I think so, to be completely honest. I've been so high on the Ravens, dude. Like, so, I love this Ravens team. What are your thoughts on Lamar this weekend? Because a lot of the a lot of the good memes on Twitter and stuff were about, you know, him, Kenny Pickett, some of these quarterbacks that came into the weekend and just did nothing in terms of points. But that doesn't necessarily reflect their performance, I guess you could say. But what were your thoughts on Lamar this week? Like I said, I was at Gillette yesterday. Oh, right. You were at Gillette, though. (laughs) I'm in the process of rewatching all of these games, and I haven't gotten to the Ravens game yet, but I've read some stats and stuff. I I don't know. Like, I... It feels like every time that these contracts happen that are like most paid you know person of all time there's all Daniel of this pressure Jones. yeah there's like all of this pre- I mean look at Joe Burrow this week it feels like there's all this pressure and you either are forced to kind of sink or swim which is fine but when you only beat the Texans but like 25 to nine with this offense that you kind of put together around Lamar, all of the drama surrounding Lamar, like he has weapons now and you're out here not getting any fantasy points and barely even, I don't know. The Texans looked a lot worse than I thought they would too, to be I, fair. As I far agree as, with that. As far as like a box score perspective, but this offense is way too good to only be putting up 25 points on the Texans. And I think that's the vibe you're going to get when you watch the game too. I think you're going to have the same takeaway. Yeah. Um, do you guys have any thoughts? Yeah. 
I, that, on that game, no, not really. Um, I kind of got what I expected out of both teams, to be completely honest with you. I didn't think that Houston was going to come out and shock the world. Uh, Are you not, not high on the Ravens? Year. No, I'm not. I've never been. I'm high not on the either. I, I've. I'm. I know you all love um, Lamar. I'm not a huge Lamar fan. He's fine. Um, I just don't think he's. You know, it's he's not like that game changer of a quarterback to like hands down win the division. I, I think it's a very wide open division. Oh, Rogers just made a play that I thought he was going to lose twenty yards on. He got the ball out of his hands. Oh my god. Also, the pregame ritual situation for the Jets just now was awesome. I have to say, they everyone on had like green lights that they were waving around. It was pretty sick. I uh, if you like watched a, it, like this is a Taylor Swift concert. Don't say that. Um. Okay, Tyler, you got the 49ers Pittsburgh game and the Titans Saints game. Which one are you want to talk about first? Um. Well, they're both really quick notes. Um, I was completely wrong about. Kenny Pickett and my bet on um, the Steelers getting the upset at home. I could not have been more wrong. That was the worst bet I had of you the week. You never easily. go with the Steelers, um, Tyler. I, I just, thought they were. I, no. I honestly, and I still think this. I might be delusional. I still think they're going to be better this year. I think they're going to be. You're delusional. Um, <laughs> I just think San Francisco might be that good, but I was also really banking on. How did Brock uh, look? Oh my God, Brock is my winner really of the good. week. I'm gonna he get to really it good. later. I will. Oh I, hate, my God, I really Kendra. hate to admit it because I've been mm, preaching nothing. So but, good. I've been preaching no, Haley, nothing about but now. them coming back down to earth this right. off season, and they just blew me out of the water. Brock Purdy came out there. They had this incredible graphic going through the storied history of the San Francisco quarterback position from 2019 to now going through all the disasters that have happened, the trades, the moves, Jimmy G, Brock's injury. Now he's back. And he went out there, he threw two touchdown passes, and he set NFL record history as the first quarterback to win his first six consecutive games back to back to back to back. And he's the first quarterback of – Pass with a passer rating of 95 or higher in each of his six regular season starts. I am all in on Brock Purdy. I'm rocking out with my Brock out. I'm not even yeah. mad about it. So he's my winner of the week. Sorry, not sorry. He looked awesome. Big Brock energy. Yeah, congratulations, Brock. You proved me wrong. So I'm still Haley, not sold on you. All right. We're ma- I'm doing it. I'm calling an audible <laughs> here. We're making predictions right now okay. super bowl winner okay after week one me right now i have to pick. yeah well i just went off about brock purdy and the 49ers uh... aaron Rodgers is injured hell yes Oh my God! It's a dream come true. <laughs> Just got walked <laughs> off the field with the trainers. Oh, Holy man. shit! If, if Aaron doesn't finish the season, I'm gonna be so happy. Oh my I God! I hope he's okay. But like, yeah, no, no disrespect, re- Aaron. Respectfully, um, I hope. I hope you're fine. I hope you go gently into retirement. Um, but don't come back on the field. Yeah, I don't know, Kendra. That's a great question. I'm gonna go with. I might put Buffalo and San Fran, even though we haven't seen Buffalo yet. And Holy shit. Zach Wilson is playing for the New York Jets right now. What? Time is a flash. I know he's injured. Guys. Nance just walked by and goes, You guys, something just happened to me. You guys are recording. Oh my God. This, this might is, be the biggest news that we've ever broken on this show. This is literally crazy. Yeah, I wish we were oh like live God. streaming or something. I know. What if Zach Wilson goes downfield right now and touchdown? What if he steals the what job? What if he goes out there and throws a pick? What if what he if steals he goes... the job? Oh my God. What if he goes out well, there and throws a pick? Here, we got a punter on the field, so I think we'll be fine. <laughs> but... Oh, you're ahead of me. Oh, am I sorry? Spoiler Tyler, alert. Tyler, you're ruining my life. Sorry I have good internet. I'm sorry. Oh, you no. literally couldn't get on this call earlier because you were like, sorry, I'm having internet issues. Yeah, it was out for a little bit. I won't lie, but it fixed itself. So shout out Google. Are you we're watching on, on cable it. or are you streaming? I am I am a Hulu Live subscriber. I'm streaming shout on DirecTV and I'm Disney. seeing 
uh, Jets play right now. First and ten. Oof. Oof. All right. Um, that is huge. We'll keep an eye on that oh, no. and probably right. be on Twitter. I, I gotta say, Good I was right. Ab- I was right about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, ladies and germs. Bro, yeah, absolutely, you were. Give us your, give us your rundown on that. Please. I haven't watched this game yet at all i just said that the bucks were my upset of the week last week mm-hmm. on i think our show and i bet on the yeah i i rode with the Tampa bay buccaneers and i was right bitch yep. um i don't know what it was i just i liked the matchup for them i thought that like there are times where i'm like you know what i want nothing to do with baker mayfield like in fantasy me. or whatever me but there's also times where i'm like you know what he i kind of want him to win i kind of want him to win dick energy like I he just does like Baker Mayfield has fat cock spirit. Like if you urban dictionary that word right now, I bet you but his his fucking face pops up. I'm telling you, it just does. I don't know what it is, but in moments like a week one random ass fucking game, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna take it. Yeah, I was kind of riding with it. Um, we talked to um we're just happy to see Kirk Cousins lose, most of us on the pod anyway. Um, but I was honestly very impressed with the Bucks. I thought they came out, they looked pretty good. Um Again, I would pose to you the question again, Kendra. I don't know if you, yeah, obviously you haven't seen the game. Tyler, what your thoughts are. Were the Vikings just really bad? Or were the Bucks to, really You don't want good? me to answer this question because I can't <laughs> answer that. Because I, answer that question. I, because answer that I box, actually, so. well, here's my thing. You've been a big Addison proponent, and I thought he had a really good game on Sunday. He scored a touchdown, he looked, yeah. thought he looked really good. Yeah. So I think that there are elements of that Vikings team that looked really good. But I also think the Bucks just but had a really But you know really one element that did Tampa not? <laughs> what, Tyler? Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins. And the handlebars and all. He looked hey. awful. All right. Any other Kirk Cousins slander? No. Nope. I've got plenty. I have one more game I wanted to talk about. I've got a couple other thoughts, too, so go for it, Hales. So I wanted to talk about last night. Big yes. Sunday night football, Giants, yes. Dallas Cowboys. I got to whip my dick out over this game at a dinner table, and it was awesome. So I'm I'm glad you're bringing this up. Um, holy shit, Giants was that embarrassing? I don't know, like, and I know it's rich coming from the Patriots, Homer, but I was I was kind of rooting for you. I won't lie, I was kind of I was I I'm living for the double meme. And my God, I think he lost like 10 years off his life last night. That like was it. just, it was rough. Daniel Jones too. Daniel Jones. And I have said from the get that I did not think he deserved the contract that he got. I didn't understand it. And for him to get out there and be so pathetically bad at football was just icing on the cake for me. I don't ever want to see the Dallas Cowboys win because we have to hear about it for the next week. And they're going to think that they're top shit. And I hope that they go out next week and get their socks blown off them. However, just really cringe from the Giants last night. I was not thrilled. I for them. had so much fun only because I hate the Giants. Me too. I thought it was. I mean, I personally was having a great time. But second of all, after the game, we parked in like the extended lot. So like it's for people who like wait 90 minutes after the game and then you can leave. So we went to get food after with some guy friends. Aaron Rodgers is in the tent. I think he might be getting on the cart. Holy fucking oh balls. Oh, my God. No way. If only his ayahuasca trip could have shown him this. Um, Tyler. I'm going to edit some uh, music in there for to dance to. We went to dinner with some guy friends last night. And, you know, I don't they didn't know me. They were mutual friends of the girl that I was with, Sarah Griffin, who used to be on this show, if you didn't know that, hello. Um, hello. But they found out that I was, like, into sports betting, whatever, and one of the guys was like, uh, what do you think about the game tonight? And I was like, I think the Cowboys are going to crush it tonight. And he was like, all right, yeah, no, I'm not going to take that. I'm going to I'm gonna take the Giants. And I was like, okay. And then at the end of the first quarter, I was just sitting there like, hee-hee, hi. <laughs> <laughs> hi. Hey, bestie. We're having weather. <laughs> um, so anytime I can do that, it just obviously is so much fun. And then I got to say the Bears Packers game is the only other thing I want to comment on. I haven't gotten to watch this back either yet, just because I've really the fact that I've watched 
four games now today is pretty impressive in my opinion. Um, I don't know what happened here, but I am not mad about it. And that's my only comment. I am mad else? about it because they kind of look good. I hate to say it. Green Bay kind of looks good. And and they were without their receivers too. Josh Allen on the move. The division still clearly goes through Detroit. But with nine I'm wins. A little worried. I'm a little worried. <laughs> Detroit with nine wins wins that division. Relax. We beat the Chiefs. That's the game I wanted to talk about real quick. Just shout out to me. I knew it was possible. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think it was. We already talked so about early. this. No, we didn't. Did we? No, yes. I don't think we did. Didn't we talk about this on our show last week? Oh, did we talk about it last week? Yeah, I forgot. I've forgotten. But just again, I'm gonna shout out myself again. <laughs> okay, I don't okay, care. Yeah, oh yeah, okay. Play it again. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, let me have this, Kendra. We beat the Chiefs. <laughs> I don't get to. <laughs> no, not many people get to say that in the NFL. <laughs> we beat the Chiefs. You beat Patrick Mahomes. And we'll get into it. I'll say this again in the look ahead segment. Uh, watch out next week, Gino. We're coming for you next. Um, breaking news. It is looking like. Uh, just from Twitter doctors, Achilles for Mr. Rogers. You guys will not let me have my Lions segment. Oh, well, if it is Achilles, God, that's no. really devastating because that oh, it's awful. And his, his career will be over. I actually like, need to text uh, my buddy at work real quick. Um, that is based off of the Zoc- <laughs> the Zolak uh, tweets <laughs> replies, and I I, I confirm those. Brian broken ankle. I can conf- I consider those sources to be reliable. <laughs> The people in Scott Zolak's replies. Well, he's going to have to take another darkness retreat, I think. Oh my gosh, guys, breaking news. There are flash floods in my county. Hell yeah, brother. Dude, Ryan Clark says broken ankle. Twitter doctors on Scott Zolak's Achilles. Hey, if I have any kind of reliable sources, those are them. Man, I can't wait for the Jets to be a disaster and my team total under to Scott hit. Zolak's Twitter replies. Simps. <laughs> Scott Simps. <laughs> um, all right. Anything else? I lost my Titans bet, lost my Kadarius Tony bet, and I think everything else hit though. Yeah, I, I had check. a very Nance was very devastated for you with the Kadarius situation. That dude. Um, also Nancy officially put a fork in her. No, womp, womp, this week. Womp. No, she can bounce back. Minor setback, major comeback. Just this week. Say. Oh, this week. Okay. Okay. I'm logging into my DraftKings account. Um, what do sad I cap have? parlay? Zero and one. No further. Oh, I also lost my time. juju bet. Mm. Mm. Calvin Ridley helped me a lot. My, we'll get into my college football bets. The. I had Sam Howell with an interception. That was also a big payout. Which my dumbass went my the entire week thinking you took the over one and a half at plus one hundred on touchdown. Oh, back on the like, cart, ladies the and gents. We're going time. back on the cart. I. That's why I was so Tyler. stunned when you sent that to me. I texted Tyler and I literally typed it out perfectly. You didn't. There, I looked back. I went back in the messages. There was no reference to a. I should have known it was an interception, but there was no talk of it being an interception. Oh, see, I thought that I mentioned that it was no, an interception. Maybe that's no. on me. Uh, I should have um, known. Uh, plus uh, half for plus 100. Uh, that should not ever be a passing touchdown number. No. No. Never. Tyler. No. It, it, that was the greatest bet of all time if it was what I thought it was going to be. And I was so upset that I didn't take it because when I went to take it, I saw like one and a half for like minus 1600. I was like, damn it, I missed it. Nope. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's that's on me no. um well i'm all just right. an idiot so we'll we'll do our bets for the sunday games on our friday show but yeah because we'll, i don't have we'll make prepared right now. yeah we'll make I need bets. some time is... to stew i need some time to stew on next week's game i need to finish watching all of these games um but we're gonna look ahead to week two obviously a big thing for us after last week is the chiefs at jaguars game jacksonville home opener um, there were some signings today. Obviously, Kelsey's going to be back 
like everybody's everybody's back for the Chiefs. No more excuses. Not an asterisk next to this game. It's Trevor Lawrence and Patrick Mahomes going at it. I think that anytime you play Patrick Mahomes off a loss, though, it's fucking terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I, I said earlier that I've already had this, you know, kind of chalked up as an L on the schedule, and that's fine. I As long as we don't get embarrassed, I'm happy. Um, last week, I don't think either team played to their full potential. Hopefully, this is like a get-right game for the Jaguars and like a moral like victory, even if it goes like a little bit south. I think that, like Tyler, anytime you beat the Chiefs, especially healthy Chiefs with, you know, happy contracts, whatever, it's, it's going to be a W. Don't try to take this away from me. I, I know t- what you're doing. Don't Don't do it. Our, I, we have our win against the Chiefs, and we earned I, it. No, I agree Don't do this you. to me. I'm not doing this to you. I'm just saying it makes it even more scary for me. Mm-hmm. All right. That's all I'm saying. All right. That's all I'm saying. It would be great if the Chiefs could start 0-2 against the Sad Cats. Yes. That would be uh, great. That would, what would I honestly, I don't know what I would do. How could we celebrate? I don't know. We could get a tattoo. I would, you get would a never cat. get a tattoo, Tyler. I would do it amidst company. I'm not going to do it by myself, though. That's so sad. I just kind of want to get the word meow. I meow. would get like a sad, a crying cat emoji no. on my <laughs> somewhere on my leg. On your ass cheek. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Would figure that out. What if they played each other in the Super Bowl? I feel like we'd have to sell a kidney to oh, go. We would have to do something for it. Oh yeah, go fund me or a lemonade stand. Yeah. I would do a lemonade stand. stand. Yeah, yeah me too. Sure. Um, I am worried about like the lack. And you know what? I did just say that Josh Allen and Trayvon Walker had a, a good game, in my opinion, last weekend. But the lack of pass rush, quote unquote, does concern me against Patrick Mahomes, just because that was like the one question mark heading into this season. And that's what I'm a little bit worried about here. I think that that's definitely something that they have over us. Um, And like... The Jaguars obviously have the better receivers, but if Kelsey's back in the game, I worry about our defense being able to deal with him a little bit. Fair. And I just want to say Zay Jones is underrated. The I end. agree with that statement. Yeah, he's solid. He's been through a lot, that guy. Uh, so shout out to him. Yeah. Um. Okay, what game do you guys want to talk about? Uh, well, I guess you. we could do Seattle-Detroit now. We're on the sad cat grind. Yeah. Yeah, I just all I had to say, like I mentioned above, uh Gino better watch out. These lines look tough. They're tough to beat. And See I'm no not evil. Saying, feel no evil. I'm not saying Gino evil. evil. I'm not saying Detroit is this hands down gonna win this game, but they could. Because I'm really high on Seattle this year. Um but. would you guys judge me for getting I think I'm gonna look into like Dan Campbell specific merch. No, I please. I think I'm gonna that, rock I would Dan love Campbell that merch for me. I'm riding real bad with the with the Dan Campbell train right now. There's a great shirt. They just released a line of uh, shirts on Detroit. Um, their Haley. fan store. What? I just had the best idea of my life. <laughs> what? No, everybody, shut the fuck up. You know your Gunther T-shirt. That I has want the one with Dan, but oh, but but too. the Dan Campbell in disguise has to be Andy Towers. Oh my god! Oh, yeah, the great. one that I is Gunther. That. I could design that for for us. Yes, Put that yes, on our yes, 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 yes. That could be our new merch. Yeah, that is I so could... good. Kendra. Well, I don't know if legally we can do that <laughs> because it's using someone's likeness, but we'll figure it out. I'm sure I can design it for us. <laughs> is it is it mean if my Jets fan friend says, "Listen, I'm in enough pain," and I respond, "Not as much as Aaron." Is that like offsides? No, I don't think Aaron's Aaron's probably not in much pain. He's got Iowa. I think he's in pain. The... I think he looks like he's know. in a lot of pain. Also confirmed ankle injury, not Achilles. Which thank God. Wow, for God that. dab. For All him. right, well, guess I'm never listening to Scott Zolak's replies ever again. <laughs> Don't listen to the Zolak reply, boys. <laughs> hmm? Question mark? Hmm? Slay? Slay? Um, My game of the week next week, which isn't a game of the week, but I'm excited for the ravens Bengals game just coming off of last week. I think this has the potential to be quite the mediocre showdown. 
Or it could be sick. mediocre. Or it could be a bounce back for both sick. teams. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it could either be a disaster or a bounce back for both of these teams. The and Bengals we could have cannot, like an offensive show. The Bengals cannot go 0 and 2 in the division. Can you imagine? It would be the biggest plot twist. It would be. I mean, did wait, did they're they start gonna... one and three last year though? Wouldn't shock me. They're uh, they're known they to go have. on they're known to go on losing streaks and then massive runs. I think that that would be crazy. That I, might have been two years ago they did that. Kendra. I kind of might rock with the Ravens. I'm not even going to lie to you. I'm so high on the Ravens, though. I will. If you ride with the Ravens, I'll ride in solidarity. Whoever I did have in our notes about this game, whoever wins this game between the two of them, that's who I'm taking to win the division. Win the division. I agree. Yeah. That's my overreaction of the week. Oh, we love it. Overreaction of the week. Oh, I also wanted to look up the Zay Flowers Rookie of the Year odds because Ooh, I kind of like him. Um, also, my only question is, like, because I'm riding the Ravens and I need someone to talk me down a little bit. Are you guys can like are you are you confident or are you skeptical of how big the personalities in the Ravens locker room are? I've always been skeptical. That's one of the biggest reasons why I've been so skeptical. I am also Ravens. skeptical in the same sense that we were skeptical about the Memphis Grizzlies. Remember when we mm. talked about them? We said mm-hmm. this, I think it would be hypocritical of me not to make the same criticism that's, for that's the a Ravens. Good, that's a good comparison. Thank you. That's true. That is a good comparison. Bringing it to basketball, baby. Um, awards. I want rookie of the year, not MVP. I guess you can't do that right now on DraftKings. Yeah, probably Lame. since the season started. I can look yeah. up the consensus for you though. Um, if you all want to get into the next one, I can look it up. Yeah. Um, and then I also have the Dolphins Patriots game just because that's a big game for this show. I will say, I know we talked about it earlier, how the Patriots don't play the Dolphins well, but usually it's in Miami. A W for the Patriots is that it is a home game and the defense looked really good. Yes, I think that's definitely riding in our favor. In the same breath, even though I'm a Patriots fan, I'm kind of, I don't know, I'm rooting. I just, I kind of want Tua to do well. I I know we've talked about that and, you know, the ifs and buts of his performance this year. What could be, what couldn't be. And after last week, I just hope for his sake that he's able to continue his stride and they have another good week of offensive play. Yeah, after his last year last year, I hope they win the Super Bowl. Yeah, I mean, I just, I'm kind of rooting for him. I know they're divisional rivals. Like, I get that. But, like, non-selfishly, like, I really want the Miami Dolphins to do well. I think that they're a fun organization to root for. Also, shout out Nance. There's already Juju injury speculation after him playing like less than half the snaps last night and not being in during the end of the game. It's he only... could explode at any moment. I'm telling it's you true. guys. Oh, Josh. Um, Allen. Just real quick. Um, what happened Zay to Josh Flowers. Allen? He went down. Number 13 player ranked. Zay Flowers wow. is one, two, three, four. Is the fifth ranked in Rookie of the Year odds. Okay. Um, at plus twelve. Who's number one? Consensus. Bijan Robinson, of course. Bijan Robinson. Your boy. Um, number two, Anthony Speak Richardson. Speak of the three, devil. Three, Jameer Gibbs. Four, Bryce Young. Okay. Nancy. Nancy. Just texted our group. Um, Any other? Uh, Jets, Cowboys. I th- I did have that as something to watch. I wanted to watch this game first, but if Aaron Rodgers isn't change? playing. Yeah. Oh, Zach Wilson just went down for a TFL. No. Oh, I thought you were saying down with an injury. I was like, who are they going to start? <laughs> Who's going out there? <laughs> Could you? <laughs> it's actually Robert Sala. He's getting, he's getting on on Oh, my God. Oh, these Jets fans look so sad. Boo-hoo. Boo-hoo. <laughs> Grow up. In the arms of an angel. I'm sorry. I, I, almost I will made never feel bad joke. for Jets fans. I'm glad okay. I didn't. I'm glad you I didn't, too. I knew we really were. need that Dan Campbell t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I'll make right, it. Any other, I will make it. Any other NFL thoughts? Um, happy to see the return of the Whopper commercial. Whopper commercial was oh, back God. in session yesterday. Uh, in addition, It's on to, my TV right now. Yeah, it's also on my TV right now, which made me think about it. Um, some other good commercials were... Uh, I'm going to pose this question now. Are you in or out? on the Ryan Fitzmagic commercials. I kind of like it. I kind of like it too. I hadn't seen them. I just found out about them last night. 
they're cringe because i don't watch on good. i don't watch on cable so i don't get all the like commercials normal people get all right um a little bit of college football talk here kind of same format as our last segment since this is the first time we're doing this we're just going to yeah, recap speed our, it, our big takeaways for the week I wanted to start with Nebraska, Colorado, just because it was such a huge game last week for a lot of like so many bets, so much conversation, so much dialogue. Crazy. I am not going to say that I'm full in on the Colorado train yet, just because they have, do I think they're, they have a tough schedule, but also TCU was so overhyped last season and they're obviously way worse this year. And Nebraska is just historically fucking terrible. Like, I'm not going to overreact like the rest of... Yeah, I'm not going to overreact like the rest of the country about this. Do I think Dion's a great coach? Yeah. Do I think Shadur could be the next Lamar Jackson? Absolutely. Do I believe in the Hunter kid? Totally. But I'm not going to overreact yet. Like, their schedule's tough. It's his first year. Like, water has to find its level at some point. And Nebraska, I'm sorry. Sure, it's a huge win as far as where you've been as a program. But Nebraska is nothing to get excited about, ladies and germs. No, yeah. I think the future looks great for Nebraska. Uh, Matt Rule's notoriously not a year one team in his stints at Temple or Baylor in college football. He's had quite awful first years in both of those situations. Um, and yeah, the Jeff Sims experiment is a massive failure but that's fine they're gonna have a losing season this year probably might make a bowl game might not who cares they will be better next year i almost am willing to bet money on it yeah and colorado though very good um yeah Shiver, and they're recruiting is gonna, their recruiting is gonna be crazy this offseason who's colorado the, yeah the they're gonna get a, both, they're, yeah both will be but um colorado's good man they're good. I don't – do I think they uh, – I am i don't know. You had them at three wins. I did have them at three wins. I do feel the like season. they're probably closer to five wins now. But I don't know. They've done nothing but prove me wrong, and I just didn't expect them to have this much success so early. Shadar Sanders looks really good. Yeah, I like him a lot. Yeah. Um, I – Also wanted to talk about the Texas Alabama game. Obviously I was shocked by this outcome. I thought that it was going to be a super close game. Um, Shocked Texas beat them at home. Quinn Ewers is kind of that bitch. And also like what is with Ohio States and letting these really good quarterbacks go like Joe Burrow and Quinn Ewers. And like now. (laughs) Oh my God. What's wrong? Oh, wow. The Jets. Yeah. I don't know if that counted though. J-E-T-S. Nope, it did Jets, not. Jets, Jets, Jets. Poor sauce. Look at Quinnen. I know. This is tough, dude. Who just wiped all that dirt off Josh Allen's head? I want to know who that was. That was cute. <laughs> that was cute. Wow. Dalton Kincaid with the heads up play, though. Look at your boy here, Tyler. I know. Oh boy, I should get points for that. Watch him. Look at I your boy here. I, I don't think I get points for that in fantasy, and I think I should. That might have been a touchdown if he – I don't know. No, Damn. yeah, good for Dalton. Um, yeah. Alabama, though, uh, Texas yeah. just yeah, completely yeah, yeah. dominated that team. They looked like Alabama looked in, in previous years. They're – I don't want to say they're the new Alabama, but they kind of look like they might be. Um, do you think that they can have sustained success, though, or do you think oh, that yeah. this was just yeah, – yeah, I mean, I, I think next I'm, year they'll be really good. I mean, this season. I've always been a Steve Sarkeesian guy. Um, I have the receipts. Um, I think he's an incredible coach, an incredible offensive mind. He's learned so much from working under Nick Saban um, on how to, like, create and sustain a program in college football. Um, you know, Bama's offensive line – was probably the biggest disappointment of the night for me. I went into the season, as you all know, I was really high on their offensive line. They do not look like how I expected them to look. Um, could they have rounded in a form? Maybe. Um, but right now they are not where they need to be. Their quarterback's not where they need to be. I'm shocked that Nick Saban didn't try to make a change last night or two really? nights okay. ago. Yeah, I, I, I think he probably should have. Because um, Jalen Milrow, he's fine. And I think he would be a starter at a lot of schools in the country, but he's not the Alabama 
quarterback. He looked good. He looked pretty good Alabama week one, though, you know. He has his moments. I, I made the comparison last night, and it's not a great comparison. He plays a lot like Auburn Bo, Bo Nix. Very, yeah, I don't very think hot there and is cold. A, but you talk about, like, he doesn't look like the standard Alabama quarterback, and I don't think that there is a standard or Alabama the quarterback. The new standard. The new standard. The past, like, Mac Jones, Jalen Hurts, Tua Tagovailoa. Yeah, but those that. guys are He's so different. Yeah, they're... And I just don't think Alabama was ready to not have that guy. Whoa! That was insane. J-E-T-S. Jets, Jets, Jets. 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 I missed it. Josh Allen with the interception. What? I, who the it looks fuck like was he, he even it. looking at? Who was that? that? Hail what Mary. Was he looking at? Hail that was Mary bad. all the way. Where's my phone? That was real bad. Um, but yeah, uh, am I worried about Alabama? I think they could still win the SEC West. Um, I think they easily could not, though. They have several losable games on their schedule still, but the SEC West, through two weeks, kind of weak. Like, I hate to say it. Not really. I kind of love to say it, but the SEC West might be dead. The SEC West is not dead. They're very – they look so weak this year, Kendra. It, oh, I know. I'm just saying they're not dead. I know it's um, a reaction, but still, I think they the SEC so might right be now. dead if we're going to say anything. I'm still giving Georgia the benefit of the doubt because we haven't really seen them open it up yet. I don't think, but it's interesting. Um. All right. I also have to say I did lose my NC State bet. I think that the weather delay is the reason that they didn't cover the spread here. They had some momentum, and then after that, like whatever three hour fucking weather delay really just kind of crushed them um i didn't hate that bet for a hot second i also think that sam hartman might be someone to watch down the line for like a like sneaky husband candidate i don't think that i really don't have faith in notre dame like i think that they're gonna be over 500 for sure but i don't think that they're gonna be in the top eight this season sustainably um but i do think that like if for some reason they are like he's someone to watch i think that he's going to be really good and i think that he has nfl potential yeah like so, high nfl potential so i do disagree with you i'm really high on this notre dame team i think they it, uh, despite the rain delay were able they systematically picked that nc state team apart on offense and uh, Audrey Castimi, he is he's emerged as one of the best running backs in the country. Sam Hartman is clearly a Heisman contender right now, in my opinion. Um, they got Central Michigan this week, which is uh, week three is a total wash, but they got Ohio State the week after that, and that's going to be like a real. I think NC State was a really good test of their offense. Ohio State's going to be a really good test of their offense because we'll know if they're legit because Ohio State's defense is legit. I think Ohio State is going to kick them in the fucking teeth, dude. I don't know. That offense does not look like someone that is able to kick anyone in the mouth. But we'll see. Maybe they haven't opened the playbook and... up yet. But... Yeah, true. I also have to say I don't have any comments on the Miami game. I didn't watch it, but I did Kendra, take my... Kendra, are you watching this? <laughs> The Jets, baby! Make a block, make a block, make a block, Garrett Wilson. <laughs> oh my God! Sorry, excuse me, Kendra. Go ahead. I just, I was like, oh bam, my God. Bam, bam, bam. look at those Jets fans! Look at all those Jets fans! There's your dad, our dad, Robert. I'm calling it right here. Zach Wilson, pick six. Okay, oh, it's this prime. Ready. This is prime pick six territory. I'm ready. I'm ready. Zach, Zach Wilson pick I'm six. So ready. Zach Wilson pick six if territory. If he throws a pick six right here, I'm gonna freak. Out. Maybe they know that they're just gonna run the ball. <laughs> I will literally end this recording right here and walk and go buy a lottery ticket. If you see me get off of this, that is why. <laughs> Come on, baby. You guys Come are gonna. On. You guys are gonna have to finish uh... this recording on your own. <laughs> Um, I, yeah. anyways, I didn't watch the Miami game. All I have to say is that I cashed that bet. That was, you did. M- yeah, that was, was my call. biggest bet that of the week. Um, that was my biggest bet of the week. Texas A&M was nothing, but their defense was like shockingly bad yeah. last week. And I don't know if Cringe. it was because Tyler Van Dyke, the, the Miami offense is like a two headed monster. They can kill you on the run, but they can also, they got Tyler Van Dyke who is, could be in the Heisman category if he, has a good rest of the year. Um, but Miami's good. 
Miami, I, I think they're a solid say, team. They're competing in the ACC. Miami had an influx of like decent transfers this year, and I'm not saying it's the Alex Earl effect, but I am saying it's the Alex Earl effect. That part. That's um, all I have to say. Best safety duo in the country. On Miami. Really? Cam Kenshins and James Williams are James elite. Williams, yeah. They're they're as good as you'll find as a safety duo in the country. Um. Only other two things I have to say. I'm all out on Auburn. Not that I was ever in on them to begin with, but I'm out on them specifically even more so now, even though they won. Um, for that Bama game. The Iron Bowl. True. So I'm not true, counting Betsy. them. I'm not saying they're going to win. Like they might not make a bowl game, but that Alabama game. Tuck it and run. Tuck out. it and run. Take care of the football, Zach Wilson. Oh, Zach. Oh my God! Why does he skip? Why? Zach Wilson is a deer in the headlights. If he team. just like, if he just tucked the ball right there and put he his head down, he would have scored to a touchdown. He wasn't like, prepared to play tonight at all. Watch this replay. He's like, tuck the football uh, and fucking uh, move. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> He's a deer in the headlights, dude. Oh, good God. Um, and then the Utah Baylor game was like the only other kind of real that game. It was this weirdly week. fun, I thought. Did it was a great it? game. It was like weirdly fun. It was a college football game. It was definitely it was pr- it was a prime example of college football. That Jackson game. Beautiful is kick. having the craziest dream right now. Like usually yeah, he'll like yeah. bark or whatever, but his whole body is like convulsing like an inchworm, and it's really freaking me out. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to get a video, but he stopped as soon as I grabbed my phone. It was freaking me he out. He knew he was aware. Uh, I don't think Utah. I know that they were without some people. Without but the starting I quarterback, yeah. Yeah, and they were without uh someone in their secondary. Yeah, I forget his name, but yeah, they were a starting player in their secondary. Yeah. Um, I just have to say I'm officially kind of out on them. I don't think they're gonna crack the top ten this year. I think that they're gonna set in that 15 to 18 range, maybe 15 to 20 range pretty consistently. Um, and I think that that Money Parks kid had a really good week one game, and I'd like to see him get more involved in the offense. I think he will be once Cam Rising's back. I, yeah. I think they're they're um quarterbacks they had a really good week one i think they fell back down to earth a little bit this week um they showed why they're not starting quarterbacks um but i think they'll be fine top 10 might be generous i do think they finish as a top 25 team though this year absolutely yeah um so that's all i got i talked about my bets anything else tyler yeah i thought i'd give out my top 10 i do a weekly top 10 on twitter i figured i'd just give it out on the show tonight um one uga two michigan i'm giving both of them the benefit of the doubt they haven't played anybody um i don't think they've opened up their playbooks yet three the university of texas i'm all in on quinn ewers i'm all in on steve sarkeesian i'm all in on that offense i think that defensive line is better than i thought it was going to be and it was and i thought it was going to be great so (laughs) Um, four is FSU. I think they have a really good quarterback situation in Jordan Travis. I think they have one of the most exciting offenses in the country. Um, they can easily compete in the ACC. I think win the ACC, they're the favorites to, um, Penn state, like I said, I think last week, um, best quarterback in the big 10, um, Notre Dame. I just said how high I was on Notre Dame. They are a pivotal team and college football this year because they play usc they play ohio state they play clemson even though clemson's we don't want to talk about them um washington uh, or i just completely skipped over ohio state um ohio state's still at seven As i'm should. giving them the benefit of the doubt still too their offense looks very not good i don't think they look like a top 10 <laughs> offense um but their defense is really good um going to be interesting to see them against Notre Dame next week. Uh, Washington has a Heisman contender at quarterback, Michael Penix. Um, they're at eight. I don't know anything about this kid. Oh, he's really good, Kendra. He, without Michael Penix on that team, they, I don't think would be, I don't think they would sniff top 15. Okay. Um, he's, so he's probably my favorite to win the Heisman as it stands in week two. Um, okay. Wow, um, that's that the over your boy, the long con. The, the long yeah, well, con. I'm, he hasn't done enough through two weeks to say that. I, I think they would be good without Caleb Williams right now. Um, Washington, I don't think. I think they would have lost the game if, without him. Um, and my stance on the Heisman is that, is that it should go to the most impactful player on the team, not necessarily the best player in the country. It's who 
had the biggest impact on their team. And I think that's Michael Penix Jr. Um, nine, Oregon, they had a scare against Texas Tech last week. Uh, but Bo Nix kind of was the biggest reason why they were able to come out on top. Um, and USC, I've got a 10. A lot of people are higher on them than I am. I don't believe in that defense at all. And they scare me. Okay. All right. That's a good recap. Um, yep. Week three, there's really not a whole lot going on. You it's have the awful. other game that I was going to talk about. I'm glad that I'm not going to be. I'm going out of town this weekend. Um, I might the only thing, just cause. The only thing I will say, I think I'm going to take UF to cover the spread. I'm not sure what it is yet, but if I like it, I think I'm going to do it. UF plays Tennessee well. Um, I don't think that they're going to win this game by any means, but I could see them covering depending that on game, what it is. That game is interesting. Tennessee, we kind of had uh, Michigan Joe Milton show his face last week against Austin P. And if he shows his face against Florida, I'm not going to say they're going to lose that game, but because Flo- Florida is really bad. Um, Florida is really bad, but, but I don't know what it is, is about not this matchup. Bad. I don't think Florida is going to be able to score the ball, but they're not bad. They could easily cover the spread. You don't know what that is off the top of your head, do you? The spread? I don't. I don't either. But it wouldn't shock me. But awful week, dude. Bless you. Sorry, I was sneezing. I had to mute myself. Um, the spread is. Tennessee minus seven and a half. Seven if and a half. Moves, I probably would put it closer to ten personally. If that moves at all, I might take Florida. Money line is Tennessee minus three twenty. Florida plus two fifty. Interesting. Um, yeah, it, it's too early for me to look better. Yeah, on that too game. early, but I'm gonna keep an eye on that for sure. Yeah, the only other thing that you had in our notes for college was that game day is the Colorado Colorado State game I don't know this could be this I might take Colorado State as well depending on that line well I'm not taking Colorado State I don't if that led you to believe I was taking them absolutely no I I I just think that water has to find its level at some point that's all I think it'll be the week after when they face Oregon Personally, oh, is that the Oregon? Okay, yeah, then game I'm gonna wait for Oregon. In week yeah, four. Week why four's, would they not do college game day? Bangers. Why would they not do college game day for Oregon in Colorado? I feel like that's way sicker because you like both, like, yeah, probably. What? If I had to guess, I think there's there's a few really good games that weekend, but um, I would guess Fox is probably set to be there and they probably don't want to. I know both of them are going to be at Colorado, Colorado State this weekend, but I think that also just speaks to how bad this weekend is. There's other games that game day could go to. Yeah. To not have, not compete with Fox. Yeah. All right. Closing kind of thoughts, winners and losers of the weekend. We're each going to pick a winner and a loser. I already said mine. I kind of my winner was. Them. Yeah. 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 Haley said that she liked Brock Purdy. Uh, loser was the Giants, Tyler. My winner, uh, Quinn Ewers in Texas. That was my winner of the week. I'm a college football guy, so I needed one college football loser, though. Pittsburgh Steelers, they completely disappointed me in every facet of the game. All Woo! Right. Any closing thoughts, party peeps? My closing thoughts are we're going to definitely, um, even though we talked mostly football today, we probably will talk about tonight's game. But so far, uh, Josh Allen not looking great. So I don't amazing. know if there's something in the quarterback water right now. Maybe everybody's just getting the kinks out. But AFC East could be wide open, baby. My closing thought is that I pray to God Aaron Rodgers isn't really, really hurt. Not me. Tyler, any thoughts? I pray humanely that he's not really hurt for the sake of football. I pray that he goes off into retirement and I never have to see his face again. All right. On that note, I hope everyone has a great week. We love you guys. We will see you twice a week now. Thanks for listening to our new football show, and we will see you on Saturday.